Second Chronicles 33 1. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. He is the longest reigning king, and he is the wickedest king. But did that which is evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abomination of the heathen, the Gentiles, whom the Lord has cast out before the children of Israel, the Canaanites. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and reared up the altars of Balaam, false gods, made a grove, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. The stars, the planets, horoscope. He also built the altars, plural, in the house of the Lord, the temple, where the Lord said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. He built altars from all the hosts of the heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. So, I mean, he's just false worshiping God. He caused his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hanan. It's killing the babies, killing the children. I'm trying to think of the God. Molech. Observed times. Used enchantments. Used witchcraft. Dealt with a familiar spirit with wizards. That's rampant today. That's in your churches today. That's in your teen teenagers today. In the church, Christian, Baptist. It's all over television. In the movies. The books. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him, God, to anger. Yeah, your magic, your witchcraft, all that angers God. He set a carved image, the idol which he had made. Statue. In the house of God. Of which God had said to David, to Solomon his son, In this house, and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do what, to do all that I commanded them, according to all the law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and all the inhabitants to Jerusalem to err, to do worse than the heathen, worse. Whom the Lord God had destroyed before the children of Israel. The Lord spanked the Manasseh and to his people and would not hearken. He preached to them, sent the prophets, told them what to do, told them to repent. They didn't do it. They did quite opposite. They did what they wanted to do. Sort of like the church today. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them all the captains of the host of the Syrians, which took Manasseh among the thorns. Those were the curse. Bound him with fetters, ankle bracelet, handcuffs, chains, and carried him to Babylon. When he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his father. He repented. He confessed. And he prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him. Heard his supplication, brought him again to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. And then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Now after this, he built the wall without the city of David, on the west side of Gahan, in the valley, he went to the entering in a fish gate, encompassed with Hopio, raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. He took away the strange god, a revival, a cleansing, the idol of the house of the Lord, all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord, 
and in Jerusalem cast them out of the city. He repaired the altar to the Lord, sacrificed their uh, peace offering, thanks offering, and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people sank, sacrificed still in the high places, yet unto the Lord their God only. Now the rest of the acts in Manasseh and his prayer unto God and the words of the seers, prophets, that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also and how God was entreated of him. All his sin, his trespass, the place wherein he built high places, set up groves, graven images, before he humbled. Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house, and Amon his son reigned in his stead. Look at verse 22 about his son. But he did that which is evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh his father. Amon sacrificed in all the carved images which Manasseh his father had made, and served them. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 4. I will cause them to be removed into the kingdoms of all the earth, because of Manasseh the son of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. One more place. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now you may ask yourself, Manasseh, yeah, he was the wicked king. And all the wickedness. But didn't he get right? Didn't he pray to God? Didn't the Holy Spirit record to us? Didn't God bring him back? Didn't he get rid of everything? Yes. And you might say in your Christian walk, God, I confess that. God, I admitted it. God, I repented of it. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I had somebody sin against me, a very serious sin against my family. That person asked for forgiveness. And I said, I can forgive you. Now the question remains to the fact is I can't forget. No matter how much I try the parties that are involved unto my dying day Unless the Lord does something, I forgive you of that sin, but I'm not going to say I can't forget. I could forget, but it's hard. And in this study here, we are looking at the word evil. You know, over there it says Isaiah, God says, I create evil. It's not sin. And you may be, and I'll give some many illustrations, hopefully. You just may came out of the doctor's office, and the doctor may say it's lung cancer. 
And you may have gone to God and said, God, I've given up the cigars. I've given up the cigarettes. I confessed them. I stopped. And such is my case. I fought cigarettes. I battled cigarettes. I put a pack of cigarettes on the altar. And I go on the way home. I stop off at the convenience store and I buy another pack. I battled that with the Lord. I fought that with the Lord. It wasn't until late 1990s, God finally gave me the victory. And I quit smoking. And since then, I've had a handful of cigarettes. Foolishly. The doctor says, I got COPD and I got emphysema. There are times I need oxygen. He said, Lord, I confessed it. Lord, you forgave me and you cleansed me and you gave me the victory. Why do I have emphysema? Why do I have trouble breathing? I know somebody saved. They smoke cigarettes. They smoke cigarettes. They smoke cigarettes. Up to three months before they died of, of uh, lung cancer. There are Christians today, they have may come home from a doctor's visit or an x-ray or blood work and they had had trouble with alcohol in their life. And they may have gotten victory over alcohol such as I have. I have not touched a bottle or drank of alcohol at all since 1990. Praise the Lord. Now there may be somebody that the doctor says it's cirrhosis of the liver. I thank God I don't have that. But they may have got down, God, I confess it. You've forgiven me. You cleansed me through the blood of Jesus Christ. I even gave that up. And my liver's bad. That, my friend, is a Bible evil. I used to tell men when I was in the prison ministry, you can, for whatever reason you want, how stupid. You can take and chop your arm off and have that stuff. And you could get saved or you are saved. And you confess that sin of foolishness. You are sorry for whatever the event was that you lost your arm. And God will forgive us. He's faithful. And God will cleanse us. But you do not have the right to sit there and stare at the stub of your arm and say, okay, it's going to grow back. Whether you are saved or not saved, and if you are saved and your sins are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved, you're going to heaven. And you have had sex 
wild, wildly, haphazardly, without a spouse, maybe adultery, fornication. You have been involved in those sins. And the doctor says, you got a sexually transmitted disease. Your spouse has a sexually transmitted disease. And your children now have a sexually transmitted disease. You say, well, Father, heaven, I'm saved. I confessed. You've forgiven me. You cleansed me. We're looking at a biblical evil. See, God will forgive any and every sin. No sinner God will reject. I don't care how vile you are. I don't care how wicked you are. I don't care if it's a kabillion sins or one great, great, nasty sin. God is able to forgive and cleanse you of that sin if you confess it through the blood and the finished work of Jesus Christ. But there are consequences. There are a evil. You're not going to get that arm back. Now in God's mercy and grace, we don't reap all our sowing. But there are some reaping. The wages of sin is death after you're saved. Matter of fact, Romans 6.23 is written to Christians. And for someone to come in, oh, I'm not, I had one guy in my life, oh, I don't for sin. I'm not, I don't sin. Are you going to die? The very fact that you die is a, is a loud announcement of Hey, I'm a sinner. You could be a person that owns a, comp a company. You are the employer. And you've got employees. You're saved. You have been doing unfaithful, unright, improper business activity. A sin. Your business may close, it may bankrupt. There may be consequences. You cannot tell your employee, well, listen, I confessed it to God. I put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm cleansed. I got to give you all a pink slip. I got to shut the door. In this life on this planet called Earth, there are consequences. There are evil to sin. Though God will forgive, God will cleanse. If you have had an adulterous or fornicating sexual activity, God will forgive you. He will cleanse you. It will not be on the books no more. Thank God. But one day you may hear. You open up the door and there's someone there. Yes, may I help you? Hi, 
I'm such and such. You're my father. You remember this woman? You remember this man? Well, actually, it would be woman. You remember this woman? You got her pregnant. Here I am. God's forgiven you. God's cleansed you. Mistreat your marriage. Do not treat your spouse right. Forget about her. Treat her wrong. Treat others better. Be nice to everybody else but your spouse. And you can repent of your sins. Of the mistreatment of your spouse. As they walk out that door forever. God can forgive you. God can cleanse you. But you reap and you sow a divorce. Friend, that is an evil of the Bible. Manasseh sinned all the sin. He got right. The Bible said he put away. But we were so quick to read about his son Amon. Was so quick to pick it back up. And it says his father's. I think it was an idol. You cannot live for the world. Live for self. Live for Satan. All your life. And expect that one happy moment for your children. Oh, now I'll reform. Now I will do right. And expect them to be right with God. When you have been a terrible example. As Manasseh, yeah, Manasseh got right. Manasseh sought God in prayer. Manasseh put the things away, but it was too late. He was a terrible example to his children. And it got to the point when Jeremiah is on scene that God said, everything that Manasseh done. Do you realize your sin involves others? That one night stand with the wrong woman could produce a child that will live to be 60 and 70 and 80 years old. That one drink at the bar and you get in your car and you drive off may ruin somebody's life for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. Your selfishness, you're selfish. And you live for self. And all the harm you have done to your spouse and your children and future grandchildren, and future great-grandchildren. Because the example that you led as a parent. Amon only picked up what his father did. Don't you go scolding your children. My daughter is a lovely woman, nice, she's friendly, she's lovely, but she's got such an impatience, 
such aggravation. And I can't point that to Lisa and her mother. I've got to point that to me. Yes, God forgave me. God forgives me. I'm cleansed. Now I've got to pray for my daughter. In her sin. God forgives. God cleanses. Amen. God saves. Amen. But in this world, thankfully God has mercy and grace. We do not get everything we deserve. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. But don't get upset when a doctor gives you a bad report about sins long ago affecting you. Your ships or ship has come in. You know why a lot of these entertainers, actors, actresses, singers, you know why they commit suicide? You know why they are involved in drugs and alcohol? Because of all the lustful, sinful, wicked living they've done. That container ship is going to come into port. And nothing's going to stop that container ship to come in. Now, salvation through Jesus Christ will get you to heaven. The mercy and grace of God, he may knock some of that stuff off that ship. But that ship is coming in. And many of the famed people cannot stand. And their alcohol, their drugs, their sex life, their money cannot cleanse and forgive sin like God does. But Christian, don't you think that you can run to God and say, I'm sorry, and God forgive you, he will, and God will cleanse you, he will. Don't you think that that ship may not come in. And if that ship does not come in, another one will. And you thank God, and you thank the Lord Jesus Christ that that other ship got lost at sea. It's called evil. And when God said, I create evil, that is the consequence of sin. Just because you're saved does not mean sin does not have a consequence. And the later in life you got saved, the later in life that you finally turned and started living right with God, the later in life you saw, hey, you started a reform. Back in your earlier life, Manasseh, that ship was loading up. There will be ships that come in. Thank God the ships that don't come in. But when that ship comes in, and it's because of something you've done, don't cry a foul. God forgave me. Yes, he did. God, you cleansed me. First John one night. Yes, he did.
See, that's one of the problems with, with the modern church today. They don't preach that sin has a consequence. Saved or lost. If you're saved, amen, God forgets about it. God cleanses you. But be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. That is evil. That's consequence. That's your ship coming in. 